G'day expats, or soon to be expats in today's topic. Today we want to run through a couple of issues that we find that people are experiencing when they're about to become an expat. Now, quite often when you're about to move overseas, there's lots of exciting things to take into account. You know, where the kids are going to go to school, where you're going to live, um, restaurants, the whole lifestyle gamut of becoming an expat. But quite often we find that people don't take the time or the attention to look into their finances before they move overseas. In today's topic, we want to talk about some of the key points you need to consider and how we can help in dealing with those issues. The first port of call is always to review your finances. Now, most people have superannuation, so that's always the best place to start. When you're reviewing your super, there's a number of key issues you need to take into account. First of all is, does your super fund allow you to be a member whilst you're overseas? Now, this may seem like a silly question, but time and time again, we're coming across super funds that once they find out one of their members is a non-resident, they're actually asked to leave the super fund. So first thing you need to do is find out whether that is okay. The best way to do this is actually to send an email to the super fund. And now the reason we recommend an email is so you have a paper trail should any problems arise down the track. The next thing you need to consider too is any insurance inside of your super fund. Now this is important because a lot of super funds once you move overseas and become a non-resident, you can't actually access the uh, benefits of life, TPD, and any other insurances associated with that super fund. Once again, we always recommend clients to email their super fund and get it in writing whether their insurance is valid or is invalid as an expatriate. The reason we recommend doing this as well is you may be living overseas for the next five years and you actually may be paying for an insurance policy that you can't actually claim on. So it's always best to clarify this. The next issue you've got to look at is any investments you may have, whether they be direct shares or managed funds. Now, when you consider these investments, the most important part to take into account is when you acquire these investments and how you want them treated by the ATO when you leave. There are two ways that you can handle these investments. One is called deemed disposal, and the second one is carried over. With deemed disposal, what happens is the ATO looks at your share or, or managed fund portfolio and assumes that you have liquidated those holdings on the day of your departure. Now this may seem drastic, but what it means is from the day that you've left the country, you are not accruing any capital gains tax that is liable and owe to the ATO. There's always important considerations to take into account. Obviously the biggest issue is you may have accrued large capital gains up until that point and the tax bill alone may make it not feasible to deem dispose and you may want to carry over those capital gains. If you do elect to do that, then obviously any time you're overseas and you're still holding these investments, you're still accruing a capital gains liability with the ATO. The third issue we'd like to talk about is obviously with respect to property. Now, a lot of Australians with their love of property have maybe one or two or more properties before they go overseas. Back on the 8th of May 2012, the ATO changed the tax legislation with respect to how capital gains are treated with Australian non-residents. Up until the 8th of May 2012, Australian non-residents, like Australian residents, were able to elect to receive the 50% capital gains discount when they've held a property for greater than 12 months. Since the 8th of May 2012, you're no longer able to access this, and this may change your view on do you hold property or do you not hold property whilst you're a non-resident. Throughout your period of non-residency, you're actually susceptible to 100% capital gains tax at the non-resident marginal tax rate. So you need to review your property holdings and determine whether this is beneficial to you or not. As Australian non-residents, they cannot participate in negative gearing. So if you are accruing these losses over time, you need to work out whether that's in your best interest as well too. As always, we're always happy to answer any questions that you may have. You can email us at info at atlaswealth.com.au or alternatively you can tweet us at hashtag askatlaswealth. You can also leave your questions in the fields below. Take care and have a great day.